Welcome to another edition of your Effective Living series. This is your 2023 Starter Pack. It's on CTFM and CTTV. My name is Bernard Avle. We've been trying to set you up for the year 2023, and we've focused on four specific areas. This is our final week where we've been talking about financial foundations. My aim today is to put it all together. So after listening to all the ideas on personal development, on emotional intelligence, on physical well-being, mental health, financial foundations, how do you strengthen yourself to achieve what you want to achieve? How do you take responsibility in order not to become your own worst enemy? My guest has been on the show before. He was on a few weeks ago where he spoke about the skills that are required for the 21st century and beyond. Mm. This morning is going to help us with what he calls overcoming self-sabotaging behaviors. Michael Ohine Fais, I guess. Michael, thanks for having come on your show. Thank you very much, Bernard. And as always, it's a pleasure. You don't get tired of coming on this show. Sometimes <laughs> I wonder whether if I keep calling you like Charlie Bernard, you've been doing this for years. <laughs> don't you get tired? You always get the energy, you always get the vim. So yeah. what is it that makes you keep coming back? You know, I was uh, checking my diary uh, a few years ago, and I realized I've been doing this for 15 years. Wow. Yes, and I've done this with almost every host of the CBS, wow. from Kwesiche Dafqua, Mo Rawudu, Sami Battles. Wow. Everybody, when we're in school, we're wow. still doing it. Wow. But it, it gives us pleasure when we go out there mm. and people say, oh, I heard you mm. on City and mm. this thing that you said, is, mm -hmm. in fact, it's made this change in my life. Mm -hmm. I remember I went to Tamale to do something and mm -hmm. one guy, as soon as he heard my name, he came and gave me a big hug and said, are you doing And I think that year we had done something on uh, self-management or mm -hmm. self-organization. And he said, that thing has really, really made an impact in my life. So that's what keeps us going. That's the mm. fuel. Why <laughs> is this topic important, overcoming self-sabotaging behaviors? It's extremely important. In fact, for me, it's crucial. Mm. Because uh, in the last four weeks, mm -hmm. uh, viewers and listeners have uh, listened and watched 16 uh, presentations uh, on various topics that covers just about every aspect of their lives. And what I see and hear, as we go around the country teaching and training, people tend to say, oh, yeah, what you are saying is good, but you know, the reality on the ground is. And mm -hmm. I hear this a lot. Mm -hmm. What is that reality on the ground? Why do people think that uh, speakers like us, what we see is no reality, that it cannot change their lives? People think that there's some change that must come from somewhere, some esoteric place. And so I think today, bringing everything home and saying, look, there are some things we do that prevents ourselves from achieving our goals, our dreams and aspirations for the year. And so it is important that we deal with that. Mm. And is this to hint that at the end of the day, it is you, the person in the driving seat, it's not anybody else. And the fact that lots of people seem to think everybody is responsible except me. Is this one of the reasons why this topic is crucial? You are spot on. Mm. Because whether it will be or not is up to us. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, of course, we give uh, place and room for the macroeconomy. We give place and room for government policy. We give place and room for so, uh, the context in which we are. But if you read all the, the history books, history is always made by those who take up their own challenges and then run with it. Yes, the external can happen to you, but the only person who can stop you is you. Mm. Uh -huh. So it is important that we know what these self-sabotaging behaviors are so that we can come out of it. I see. So in line with this, do you have any specific points you want to share? Number one, um, mm. I believe that, and I wrote this in my very first book, which I released uh, almost 15 years ago or so, Why Not the Best? Mm -hmm. And in that book, I said that some people have taken a vow of poverty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. by their own conduct mm. and by their beliefs and by what they do. Mm -hmm. A vow of poverty meaning that they don't own up to anything. Mm -hmm. It's their parent, it is their neighbor, it is the school system, it is the government, it is the tribe they come from, it is the traditional church. They blame everybody else but themselves. Now, we need to understand that as human beings, and I think we did this about two years ago when mm -hmm. we treated comfort zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As human beings, we are programmed to be comfortable and to keep mm -hmm. within our comfort zone. That's mm -hmm. how our mind operates. Mm -hmm. Because the a sheer volume of information that our minds needs to process for us to adopt a new behavior is too much for it. 
And so the mind itself tends to tell us, you know, Charlie, chill, don't, don't stress yourself because otherwise the mind itself needs to process so much to be able to allow us to learn a new habit, a new skill or a new something. So naturally, if you yourself don't struggle to come out of that, your mind will keep you at where you are. Mm. Because it takes too much work for it to allow you to change. That's why change is so difficult for a lot of people. Because that's how we are programmed to be. And so one is that you need to will to want out of your present situation. If you want to achieve a goal, you need to will it so bad that nothing can stop you. It is only when you reach that point that you can really turn your life around. Mm. 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 We are programmed to be comfortable. Yes. So if you don't will to take charge, you can't make a difference. Yeah. So that's point number one. Yeah. Point number two. Point number two, and, and this is very important. You know, where you are today, mm. what you have achieved today, mm. is a direct reflection of four things that you did 15 years ago. Is it? Yes. Wow. <laughs> number one is the decisions that you took. Mm -hmm. the choices that you made, mm -hmm. the habits that you formed, mm -hmm. and the actions that you took. Can you repeat that? The decisions you made, mm -hmm. the choices you made, mm -hmm. the habits you formed, and the actions that you took. Hey, yes. Wild, if you like, re reflect over your life. And that's how mm -hmm. all of us are. Mm. Where you are today is a direct result of the decisions you made five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a direct result of the choices you made five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's a direct result of the habits that you have formed over mm. these five years. Mm. And also the actions that you have taken over these five years. So for me, these are the four things that makes a man or a woman. Wow. Decisions, decisions. choices, habits, actions. This four wow. makes up any human being. And so you see, mm. when the year starts, if you don't tackle this four, your year will remain the same. No <laughs> matter the amount of olive oil or anointing oil you pour on your head. <laughs> if you don't tackle this four, yeah, you, so even if I say you, your life will never be the same again, and you receive it it's in just Jesus' name. Yeah, you can jump as high as you can resort. to resort. Nothing is going to change until hey. an element in this four changes. But I receive it too. I receive it with my feet. <laughs> Still, it didn't work. You know, there's a story <laughs> that a pastor was preaching. Yeah. And uh, he said, this year, somebody will marry. <laughs> and there were two, an old lady and a young lady. They were all sitting yeah. down in the pew. And yeah. the old lady got up and said, me riso. <laughs> so she got married. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. So even that one, you must take an That's action. Also. Exactly. And that is how come they will tell you that you must sow into the prophecy. So you must even act on the prophecy to establish it, to I'm, let I'm, it come I'm thinking through. about your thing again. So the decisions. Very good. So like, I, I decide what course to do at SSS. Good. Or which university to go to. Good. The choices I make. Good. Who you marry. Good. All right. Habits. Daily, you can say you want to pray every day. Very good. Read a book a week. Very good. Actions. So I, every morning I come to work. <laughs> good. Exercise every day. Very good. So those are the four. So, so you're saying my desires are not part of this form? No, 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 no. no. The desires, my ambitions, my hopes, no, my dreams. They are expressed in the choice and the habit. Mm. Because when you desire something, you must act upon it to make it a reality. If you desire a lady, what do you do? You cannot desire a lady and marry her in your dreams. <laughs> you must take action. You so, must move forward. So desires are not enough. This no, 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 is what no. matters. It must be expression. It must mm. find expression in mm. the action that you take. If you like, wish to marry a lady in city for 15 years and let one sharp guy come here and then he makes an approach and see who walk her down the aisle. So the, you, your desires cannot change your life. Your aspirations cannot change your life. What mm. changes your life mm. is the choices that you make, the habits that you form, and the actions that you take consistently on a daily basis. These are the four. Mm. Now, until you change these four elements, you are taking a vow of poverty you are deciding that your year will be the same. <laughs> I have said it before, mm -hmm. that when we have a new year, the year itself, as you know, is not new. But God, in his wisdom, gives us an eraser, first January of every year, to erase what we did mm -hmm. the previous 365 days so that we can continue to write. Mm. Now, what a lot of us have done is that we are holding the eraser. We've made a mistake. 
but we are free to clean, to wipe the eraser. And wow. we keep saying, ah, why is difficult? Oh, the questions are hard. Oh, the teacher is some way. Ah, why is it that my mates are right? But God has given you the eraser. All you need to do is to erase and continue to write mm. a, a, a new one. This is the Effective Living series. We're talking to Michael Ohini Efa, and our topic this morning is overcoming self-sabotaging behaviors. It's our last topic. We're trying to just give you the final impetus for action, and he said a lot of things. And I think the key point so far is that where you are is a sum total of the four big things, decisions, choices, your habits, and your actions. And I think two things I gleaned from this. Desires are not enough, actions matter. And I think Mike Murdoch was going to put it this way. He says, habit is more powerful than desire. That's right. H habit is more powerful than desire. So you can desire to be the best student in your class. You, you, uh, and he also says something. He says, your, your, the, the, the worthiness of a goal is not in how noble it is. No. It is in the action you apply to it that makes the goal meaningful. So don't say I have a bigger dream than you. So who wants to be, what do you want to be? I want to be president of Ghana. I want yeah. to be UN Secretary General. Well, yeah. I want to have a big farm. But if yeah. I work on getting a big farm and you just mm -hmm. sit down and say I want to be the president of whatever, Good. it's not going to work. So yeah. you gave me two points. Yeah. I think you have two more and yeah. four. So what we need to do, one, is mm -hmm. what is the first behavior we engage in that sabotages our dreams, mm -hmm. our aspirations, and our goals every year? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people say, oh, you know, Ghana, yes, Mm. And Ghana is hard, and Ghana is that. But you haven't changed anything you are doing. Mm. All the causal factors <coughs> are in your hands. Mm -hmm. You have not changed that, and yet you are expecting some magic, something mm. to change your life. It won't happen. Mm -hmm. So the first thing people do is that one, at the beginning of every year, we need to rewire our mind. You need okay. to enter every year with a new mindset. Mm -hmm. You need to enter every year with a new approach, a new attitude to things. Mm -hmm. If you don't renew your mind, the Bible says it very clearly, that you be ye what? Transform. Transformed by the renewal of your mind. If you don't <coughs> renew your mind, you will not be transformed. So every year, what is the mindset that you want to tackle the year with? Mm -hmm. In 2023, what's your mindset? A lot of people have just entered 2023. On 31st night, we chant, the slogans are there, we wear white, white. But nothing has changed. We still see Ghana the same. Mm. Mm. We still see Ghana yeah. the same. Now, as I said, 95% of our mind or brain is subconscious. Mm. We work with only 5%, they're mm. conscious. And so a big part of our lives, we don't even know what is happening to us because mm. some of them are buried very deep mm. at the deep processes of our mind. Mm. Now, look at this. The average person has between 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. Hmm. Now, 80% of these thoughts are negative. Oh, and 95% of these thoughts are repetitive. Hey. So can you imagine what is happening to us? You're just wasting your mind. 80% <laughs> are negative. Yes. And what percent is repetitive? 95% is repetitive. How do, they, how do they even calculate these things? Well, Charlie, psychologists, they, oh, how, yes, psychologists even calculate this. The university don't hey, have done this. Eighty percent of your thoughts are negative. Yes. Ninety-five percent are repetitive. Yeah. No, it's the other way around. Ninety-five percent. Yeah, ninety-five percent is repetitive. Yeah. Eighty percent are negative. So you can wow. imagine the mm. margins that we are working that's with. That mind. is why I said that. So that's why we wake up and then go and do say, oh, by this track. Uh, as I'm going to do, will they wear? Oh, even this contract crap, they'll rig their thing. Let me not bother. That, so, and so we keep doing the same thing. Our mindset is visited on the negative, on the wrong, on the fact that Ghana is. Meanwhile, there are people making millions, even within the same system and the same uh, structure. So, that is one of the things we need to do that renew your mind in 2023. Have a new mindset and approach to your life. What is it? You need to make what? as the boys on the street will say. And how, if you don't do that, then I'm afraid you are going to have the same life repeated every day for 365 days. Wow, let's come to the fourth and final point. The final point is really, you see, we are habits. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we are creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do every day is what gives us the life that we see. Mm -hmm. what gives us the outcomes that we see mm -hmm. at um, the beginning of every year and also by 31st night. And so every year, if you fail to install new habits, your life will be the same. Mm -hmm. So sit down and reflect over your life. 
ask yourself, what are some of the things that I do that do not lead me to my goals and dreams and aspirations? What are the things that I do that is not helping me as an individual? And then change those habits. Uh, do a reflection, say, okay, um, maybe I do green bottles every Friday night. <laughs> and that takes about 100 Ghana CDs for me. Mm. Uh, that 100 Ghana can buy me one bag of cement. So this year, I'm going to change that. Or even you say, okay, I'll do the green bottle, but instead of three, I'll do one, uh, just to slow down. And then the money for the two, I'm going to put it uh, into cement or something. So look at your life. You've been a, a professional. What are you doing to develop yourself so that you can grow the, on the corporate ladder? What are you doing towards your own dreams and aspirations? You haven't done that, and yet you are expecting the year to change for you. So failure to install new habits when the year starts mm -hmm. means that you are sabotaging yourself mm -hmm. and you are going to get the same outcome by 31st night. You'll be left disappointed, and then you see that, ah, Ghana... Uh, the president must come and do something. The president won't do anything. <laughs> Whether it will be or not, it is up to us. Wow. So this is, this is crucial. I, I'm thinking a lot about what you're saying. I think in the previous point, you said something about the mindset for the year. Yeah. And how to... to so I used to have this mindset that I have time. Mm. So a lot of things that I thought I needed to do, I said, oh, I'll do it. But I've had a personal tragedy that sort of tells me that I don't have any time at all. So mm. it's sort of, there's a sense of urgency that, and clarity that tragedy brings. Mm. So mm. there are things that I used to mm. think, oh, this one, I can do it next year. That's right. It's almost like a lot of things have to happen now. Good. So it seems as if I'm overloading myself with mm. things, but I feel that I don't have any more time, <laughs> right? I don't know what you think yeah. about that. I don't know whether I'm overreacting because so, for example, I say, oh, my kids, they have to learn this, they have to do that. But mm. I'll space it, I'll say, actually, yeah. do it now. <laughs> okay, because yeah. I used to think I will have a lot of time, but I lost my wife. And I'm mm. like, Charlie, it happened so suddenly. So it pushed me into some level of mm. clarity and speed, right? And I don't know whether that's an example of the mindset for the year. In terms of, so, you know, when Samens asked me to do something, like, okay, I need to do it like yesterday. Good. Because I don't even have time. So, like, yeah. Quickly, just get the, do the thing and give it to him so I can move to something else. In the past, also, Charlie, I could do them. Yeah. And I don't know. That's one of my yeah. mindsets, which is what, I don't know what you have to say about that. Spot on. Mm. Um, and I applaud you for that. I think the only thing is to be measured mm. in the new sense of agency that you have installed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you may crash. I'm trying to install <laughs> it, actually, because <laughs> yes. it's not, it's, it, I think it takes a while to install it. That's right. I'm it trying. Takes, 21 days to form, mm -hmm. and then 66 days of consistent practice to install. Oh, okay. So there's a science to this. <laughs> yes. 21 days to form a new habit. 21 days to form. Yes. And 66 days to install. Ah, so you can form it, but not install it. Y so yes. you form it in 21 days. Yeah. And then you sort of embed it. So that's three weeks. So Good. if you do something consistent for three weeks, yeah. you form the habit. That's right. Now, if you do it for two months, yeah. you it have... Becomes Installed. It becomes Install. part of you. It becomes part of you to the point oh, okay. of being automatic. Oh. And that, uh, that is the point at which your habits have been formed. Is this for both good and bad? Yes. So bad habits also 21 days. Same thing. Forgive. That's how come we have alcoholics. And it's difficult to break it because they have installed it. And so I, I, you need wow. to go through a reverse <clears throat> process of deinstalling. Mm. And it will go through the same process. Hey. So if you take 21 days <laughs> from a bad habit and 66 days to install it, you need 66 days to uninstall it yes, and then 21 days to... Oh, yeah. my Lord. That's right. That's why wow. it's a program. And so people that you often hear, Charlie, relapse. Mm -hmm. Or even for drugs and other things, you hear that somebody has relapsed because there is a science to the deinstallation process. Wow. And if you don't give yourself time, chances are that you may come back. <clears throat> we are still on the Effective Living series, and uh, my guest is Michael Ohini. This topic is really a bonus topic. You have bonus tracks on CDs. You have a bonus topic. We call it overcoming self-sabotaging behaviors because the point is that at the end of the day, what do all these things mean? And how do you take responsibility? And Michael is helping us work through all of this. Had a lot of things, and I'm, I'm sharing with my life because I feel it, it helps to bring the issues in perspective. There's another thing that I realized. So I was reading Romans 8. 
And for a lot of times, I read it wrong. Romans 8, 6, you know, used to say, uh, they that walk in the flesh mind the things of the flesh. Mm. And they that walk in the spirit, the things of the spirit. Mm. I always used to think, in a sense, this is Romans 8, 5, is the mind that determines the action. But there's a certain sense in which I got it last time, where it says, mm. if you walk in the flesh, your mind will be set on the flesh. So it's actually what you do that sets your mind. That's right. It's not... So it's, it's like a f funny chicken and egg situation. Yep. In the past, I used to think, okay, if my mind... So I was like, oh, let me shape my mind this way to help me behave this way. But actually, as you said, if I behave this way regularly, my mind accepts that is how you're supposed to behave. Right, so exactly. actually, you can... F so I think somebody said, you don't think yourself into a new way of acting. You, you act, act yourself into a new way of thinking. And I thought it was so perfect for me that... Yeah. If I want my mind to change about something, if I do the thing that I want to do, and I do it well enough, my mind will agree that I have to do it. Good. Other than just saying, oh God, help me to change the way I think. Because there's nothing that's going to change. That's right. Because your mind actually follows your behavior. It's a Good. pattern. Good. I thought that was, that was yeah. I don't know what you think about that. I, I, no, I, we, we just discussed it mm. about the repetitive nature of the mind. Mm. So the mind keeps 80% of whatever it is that goes away from you. Because mm. as I said, it takes too much processing time mm. for the mind to be able to make sense of the things you need to do. Mm. Mm. And, and that's how mm. come we form habits. So that with the habit, the mind does it. For example, you don't think to switch on a light. Yeah. Because then your mind will have to process two million it, bytes of information. Uh, giving it too much exactly. work. Exactly. So mm. it will keep a lot of things away from you. Wow. And so until you come to that self-realization mm. that I need to do this, I need to take this action, I need mm. to make this choice, mm. your mind will never help you to process that. No, that, that's really deep. So in yeah. a sense, the mind is trying to simplify its life. Very good. So it forms habits <laughs> and then thinks on more complicated things. So when it meets an uncertain situation, mm. then you task it. That's right. But when it meets, so like when I come on air, because I'm so used to what I do, Good. I'm not really thinking. Yes. It's like my nature. Yeah. But if you put me in like um, an engineering room and you ask then me to figure out something, then you have to process the new information to make sense out of it. And in doing that, you will consume more energy. So your mind basically follows your thinking and says, you know what, this is too much for my master. Let me keep this away from him. So but how do you balance being efficient at what you are good at with growing? Because one of the philosophies I also have is that I only grow by doing things that are not usual. So if so, I give an I, 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 So when I there are some, when I went to Lagos, there are some courses that are easy for me. All right, so I'm doing economics mm. now. Reading subjects come easily to me. So if I just yeah. do reading, yeah. I can get all A's. Yeah. But I said, okay, let me take maths. Mm. In Lagos, maths is pretty tough. Mm. All right, if you take maths at level hundred, actually, it's not that easy. <laughs> but it sort of forced me into a certain rigor that when I got to level 400, mm. a lot of the economics courses, which are mathematical, were much easier. So my better grades came in level 400. Mm. A lot of my mates who did like easier subjects in level 100 mm. had very good grades. Mm. But when we got to 400, their grades fell off because the, the economics becomes mathematical and you've not invested in the maths. Mm. So it, it sort of gave me this mindset that if I want to grow, I have to do things that are hard. So I don't know how far to push that philosophy, whether it's a great philosophy or whether I need to balance that a, a bit. It, it's not necessarily hard, but new things. Yeah, that I'm not used to. Exactly, that will further your development. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it may be hard, it may be easy, but it has to be new, which is outside of your comfort zone. Mm. All mm. aimed at helping you to achieve the goal that you have set for yourself. Mm. Mm. These are interesting things. So, mm -hmm. so you need to sort of know yourself and then be able to assess where you are with, with all of this. Very good, and then make the necessary decisions. Okay, final point. What, what's the balance between personal responsibility and accountability partners? Because you said that, I know the day you're in the driving seat of your life, okay? Mm. But I also sense there's a need for having people you trust who can say, hey, Aloski, Charlie, when was the last time you took a vacation? Mm. You know, when was the last time you did this or that, yeah. you know, so yeah. talk to me about that. Yeah. Um, in fact, there's, there's a science to having accountability partners. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the University of Pennsylvania that's conducted this study that 
you are 66 percent more likely to achieve a goal when you commit to somebody else oh yes oh even though you are in the driver's seat you need mm. a support system mm. you need a support system mm. and so the, this is where the accountability partners mentors coaches consultants come in mm. and so they come in to support you in installing the habits mm. in supporting you to act on the decisions that you have taken yourself mm -hmm. and to also serve as a check for instance when you are going off then they will tell oh no or when you are not doing what you must do like mm -hmm. you said then they remind you oh uh, when was the last time you took over? Then now you bring it into your frame of mind and say, oh, okay, actually, let me start planning towards it. So you are in the driver's seat, but you need support, you need help. So, and that is the role of that. They will not take your role from you. They will not take away the fact that you must drive. Mm. Their job is to push you small so that you can start the car. So and in a way, it. it's easier to lie to yourself than to others. Because if I just tell myself that, I want to move house. Mm -hmm. I just told myself, nobody yeah. knows. So That's I can right. defer it. Yeah. But if I have two friends, we have a small WhatsApp group, and Good. I say, Charlie, I want to move by March. Good. It's like, uh, Ben, how, how far is the house? Yeah. So that one, you can't lie, yeah. because you have brought them in to help <laughs> you to achieve it. Very good. Wow. Very good. Or even knowing that they are going to ask you, in itself, make sure that the day before the deadline. I will do some checks exactly, so that I can give them an answer. Exactly. That's why wow. you are 66 percent more likely to achieve the goal once you have committed to somebody to support. And that's all we have time for for this special edition of the Effective Living Series. We've been looking at self-sabotaging behaviors that you must avoid in 2023. After all is said and done, the responsibility is yours. I've been talking to Michael Ohinefa, who's come on the show for the second time this month to give us those insights. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.